Hello students, in this video we'll see how to modify the Black-Scholes equation when there's a continuous dividend being paid on the stock. Let's consider a stock, S, which has continuous dividend rate Q and follows geometric Brownian motion. So ds is mu s dt plus sigma s dw. And a derivative by Edo will satisfy the equation df is ft plus mu s fs plus one half sigma squared s squared fss dt plus sigma s fs dw. And what we'll do is we'll construct the same portfolio as we did with Black-Scholes. We'll construct a portfolio pi by shorting one of the derivatives and taking the long position of partial f, partial s in the stock. And now we'll compute the differential of this portfolio over a short period of time. Delta pi will be negative delta f plus partial f, partial s, delta s. But now this difference is that while the portfolio changes this way, our wealth will change in the following way. The change in the wealth will be negative delta f plus partial f, partial s, delta s. And then I will have qs, the dividend rate, times the total number of derivatives delta t. So this expression over here is the dividend distribution. So if we plug these values in, negative delta f, we'll compute this first, is negative ft plus mu s fs plus one half sigma squared fss and these terms are my delta t terms for the derivative. Then I have minus sigma s partial f partial s delta w. Then I will have my terms plus partial f partial s and then mu s delta t plus sigma s delta W. And finally, I'll have my distribution terms. My dividend distribution will be plus Q S partial F partial S delta T. If we look at the like terms, we will see that this term over here is mu S delta T F S, and I'll have a negative mu S F S delta T, so those terms will cancel. And then these sigma s dw terms will also cancel. So this term will cancel with this term. And if I combine all the like terms together, I will have negative ft minus 1 half sigma squared fss. And then I will also have this term over here plus q s f s. These are all my delta t terms. Since there's no more randomness, this must be equal to r, the risk-free rate of return, times the initial portfolio delta t. And this is my risk-free pricing. So if I substitute what pi is, this is r, and then I have a negative f plus partial f partial s delta t. I can cancel the delta t on both sides 
in rearrange, if I rearrange, I have the following PDE. FT, I'll put that on this side of the equation, then I will have a plus R, and then FQ. If I throw it on the other side of the equation, I'll have an R minus Q S F S plus one half sigma squared S squared, and there's an S squared over here. S squared F S S is equal to R F. So this is my Black Scholes PDE when there's a dividend of Q and a risk free rate of R, and so we notice that this is the only term that's affected. So the only difference from the original Black-Scholes equation. So solving the Black-Scholes equation without a dividend is structurally the same as solving the Black-Scholes equation with a dividend. You just modify the risk-free rate of return by subtracting off the dividend rate. And this dividend rate being subtracted off will appear in the same pricing for the call option and the put options that we'll see in future videos for Black-Scholes. Thank you very much.